50. Second quarter in a 30.5. The New Zealanders now 1, 2, 3 again. Eastburn Grant the outside, draws a metre in front. Above the stars under pressure. Giola Cola pulls to the outside around the turn of the 250. In behind them came Britton Abbey making ground. Just in behind them, Mary's Dream. Followed by Western G. Wagon Apollo pulls to the outside with pride of fatigue. Still 15 metres off the lead. Around the turn of the 200. Third quarter, 29.4. Giola Cola quickly raced to the lead now from Western Grant. Here's Pride of Petit from Will McNamara storming home. Then Wagon Apollo, but Pride of Petit is coming home all over the top of them. What a wonderful mare. The eight-year-old hit the lead, and the Cotting Championship Grand Final goes through Pride of Petit and the Burton's marvellous effort. Pride of Petit wins two leaders to Fiona Cola. What a great mare she was, pride of Petite, such an outstanding mare for the country and the square gator for Australasia. Joining us live on the phone, Adam Hamilton from Melbourne. Adam, we appreciate your time here on the show tonight and looking forward to what's going to be an emotional last edition of the Inter-Dominion Trotters. Yes, good evening to you, Jess, and to everybody. Apologies for the background noise, believe it or not. All the action in Melbourne, but I've got to uh, dart up to Sydney for, uh, for 24 hours before coming back for what I think is about as good a night as harness racing uh, as you'll get. And, yes, there's that tinge of sadness, uh, sentiment, uh, emotion going into the last of the Inter-Dominions. And when you hear performances like that from Pride of Batuta, it reminds you uh, how many wonderful chapters there's been in this race. And I think many of, uh, many of the fans, uh, regardless of what side of the ditch you come from, expect that the trophy might, for the last time, and yet again, be going back to New Zealand. Well, we're hoping so, Adam. We do have a very strong contingent. And speaking of which, we're going to check out uh, the favourite and defending champion in I Can Do's It. Uh, he's been emphatic in recent wins, Adam. And last week, well, I didn't do it, created a bit of a, uh, a nightmare for the caller here in this heat with the dead heat. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Craig Rail um, on, on paper, it was probably the finish that he didn't want, but uh, uh, and then for them to dead heat as they did was uh, uh, was probably the worst case scenario. But uh, look, I, I didn't do it. It's a wonderful trotter, and he's a real uh, uh, testimony to the training talents of Moore Williamson because he's been through a fair bit. What I liked about him is uh, I can do that had him beaten, and I didn't do it kick back. But what I want to stress is that it wasn't a genuinely run race. He might have looked as though he was going hard and pulling hard in front. I didn't do it, but really it was very slowly run. And I can do the two to sprint like that and still split the prize was a terrific performance. Um, uh, uh, the draw's been kind of I didn't do it, and we'll talk more about that soon. But uh, I still think on what I saw last week in a genuinely run race, I can do that will have his measure in the final. And I read an article that you wrote for the weekly here in New Zealand that maybe the Melton track might be the query. Well, look, I think it is um, just that I can do it's been there twice and suffered his only two defeats in Australia. And to be honest, he's trotted awfully there on both occasions. But he's obviously going to be a different horse this time round. And, and I think he's clearly the one to beat. As we look at the fiery Ginger last week, um, didn't cop anywhere near the pressure he did in the first round of heats. Dictated, cruised away and, and actually did it really impressively here. I'm, I'm not sure he's got the strength of some of these, but he's certainly got the speed and, uh, and I like what I, I saw of him last week it'll be interesting how much gate speed he shows from barrier five he'll come into four if the emergency still as Earl doesn't get a run and uh, I didn't do it is in barrier two I didn't do it he didn't show blazing gate speed last week and and many think that you know just maybe the fiery ginger and even possibly stylish monarch from out wide can make it interesting in that dash to the first turn and speaking of Stylish Monarch, we're going to check out his performance uh, now. He's currently uh, sitting in second position here. Adam, Springbank Richard just looked like he didn't quite have that, that finishing burst that he had the first week. Yeah, I, 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 look, I, I would agree with that, but he's a supreme stayer, Springbank Richard, and he was probably always vulnerable to that sharp speed that Stylish Monarch possesses. The one query going into the race was, is this anything like the Stylish Monarch of Auckland Interdoms last year? and clearly he's headed in the right direction. He's still got the speed at the start, at the finish, and he looks to be on an upward spiral, but he has drawn that wide barrier in six, but he'll come into five if the emergency doesn't get a run in the final. Looking at the uh, the breakdown of the barrier draws, I didn't do it two, I can do it four, the fiery ging of five, six, stylish monarch. What do you make of Sundon's gift this campaign, Adam? 
Oh, look, I think he's I think he's been honest, but um, time is catching up with him. There's no doubt about it. He's nine now. He's been honest. He, he, he doesn't appear to have any real ping about him. I thought he was adequate without getting carried away, and it's going to be an almighty task for him from the outside barrier. But what an achievement. He's won two finals. He's into yet another one. And it'll almost certainly be the last time, I think, that we'll probably see him in a big race. But just a place chance for mine.